Uh, so this is the Zoom virtual class, okay, with the IELTS writing steps. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so how's it going to work? So usually the Zoom classes, they're going to be uh, me giving you a presentation, okay? And uh, there will be a presentation. You can participate via the chat or you can also speak, okay? And uh, your camera can be on and off. So you decide, all right, cool. And you can ask questions at any time, okay? Uh, if when I'm sharing the screen, it's kind of hard to see the questions in the chat, but uh, at the end, I'll be able to answer all of them. All right, cool, let's get started. Okay, so who am I? So my name is Fabiana, okay? And I started Fabi English a few, few years ago, and uh, I have been teaching English for a long, long time. IELTS for about seven years now, and uh, my aim is always to help students with whatever I can. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so yeah, and uh, I've been working, uh, part of my uh, experiences in Brazil, and the other, most of it has been in Australia, in Brisbane, where I live now, okay, but if you have any other questions about me, just ask, all right, cool, so let's go, okay, so why did I create a writing step? So as I said before, my main aim is always to help students, okay, so my lessons are based on, um, they're based on students' necessities, okay? So every time a student comes to me and I tell them lots of things, but my main aim is always to help them get to where they need, okay? So throughout my journey as a teacher, I have developed lots of different ways of letting people know how to do things, all right? Yeah, so this is the writing steps, okay? So I devise the writing steps basically to help students achieve their goals, especially in the IELTS exam, all right? Okay, so why I devise the steps? Because I feel that students who are starting to write, they get really, really anxious, okay? And I feel that uh, when students get anxious, they don't succeed, okay? So they see the writing and they don't know what to do. They don't know where to start, okay? And they also feel quite stressed, all right? So uh, when they feel stressed, I think it's kind of hard to, to get what they need okay just because they are stressed okay and another thing is they get lost okay so a lot of people they see a writing task okay it doesn't matter if it's writing task one or writing task two for the IELTS exam they feel completely lost okay when they have to to um to do something okay and they don't know where to start so the steps were developed to help you at least to know where to start okay and help you succeed okay so um so again as i said before it's a way of helping so you don't look like this okay because my main aim is for you to look like this so a lot of people struggle with writing but uh when it comes to uh writing i do believe that it can be fun okay so and i'll help you with that today all right cool so uh when you see something like this what comes to mind okay so a lot of people who see this uh, writing task, this isn't a writing task from the IELTS exam, a lot of people who see this uh, task, they get really, really lost, okay? And uh, they don't know where to start, they get anxious, some people say, oh, I don't know what to do, that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, so one thing that, um, one thing that the writing steps will help you with, that list you know where to go, okay? I got this writing from this book. Uh, if you're practicing for the IELTS exam, I really suggest this Cambridge collection. Okay, I have been using them for a while now with my students, uh, the schools where I used to work too. And uh, I feel that this book and uh, the exams that you can find there, they are very, very authentic. Okay, so um, what, we, what you have there, it's very similar to the exam and it's funny because I use all of these collections to help my students, right? And when they go and they do the exam, they come to me and say, oh my God, it was so similar. The exam was very similar to the activities we were doing, uh, the practice activities, because a lot of people, they, they think that sometimes they do practices, you know, when they're studying and then when they go to the real exam, they they think is much more difficult okay so this book is known to be very similar to the real test so that's why i use it with my students 
okay and i suggest you use them too because they're very very good okay so i grabbed this one from ielts 8 i think it's test two or three i'm not remember now okay so yeah so so let's go back to the task itself so when you look at this uh what comes to mind i wanted to think about it a little bit so what comes to mind when you see this one so uh one thing that comes to mind it's too much so a lot of people think it's too much okay and that's a big problem because you don't want to have that feeling when you are doing the exam especially at the time of the test itself all right cool so i'll help you not to feel this way all right okay so uh the writing steps okay so let's think about the writing steps now okay um i devised seven steps okay to help you get the score you need on the ielts exam and not feel frustrated and not get lost when you see a task okay so the first step is actually okay so the first step is the task okay so for me when you have to do a writing task for the ielts exam first thing look at the task the second one is the topic third one organization next one the plan the other one um write the 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 test itself okay and then let me put this over here and then revise and then the last thing is send it to fabi okay so especially if you are uh, especially if you are practicing okay uh with me <laughs> i suggest you do this send it to me okay so, uh if you are uh if you're doing the real exam maybe submit okay so but these are the steps okay so let's get started did you hear juju oh my god juju. okay so let's get started okay so first one the task okay so i think that when you have to write the first thing you do of course you look at the task okay and then uh what do you have to do you have to think about what type of task or question this is okay so when you look at this um task here let's have a look so in some countries the average weight of people is increasing and their levels of health and fitness are decreasing okay what do you think are the causes of the problems and what measures could be taken to solve them so if you have been studying for the ielts for a while you probably know that there are different types of tasks okay do you know which type this one is yeah this is problems and solutions okay so this one is problems and solutions so in my opinion uh when you think about so you know that this one is problems and solutions okay so when you know this one's problems and solutions you start thinking about what you have to do all right so uh when you look at this you start thinking okay this is problems and solution what do i have to do what is expected from me because if you don't do what is expected you're probably going to lose points when it comes to task achievement okay so that's why this is step one all right then you will want to step two okay so step two is the topic when i say topic i mean what is the task about so usually the answer would be around here so uh, in some countries, the average weight of people is increasing and their levels of health and fitness are decreasing. So when you look at this, what is the topic? But I mean, generally speaking, what is it? It could be health. It could be health and fitness. The, the word is already there. Okay. It could be uh, healthy people, unhealthy people. It could be diet. All right, so it's a good idea for you to start thinking about what is the topic. But I'll tell you the main topic here would be health, okay? And when you start thinking about health, you uh, when you know actually when you know the topic itself and you start thinking about it, I believe that all the information you have about this topic starts coming to mind, okay? And when that comes to mind, that's when you actually start getting ready to write. Okay, because remember, you need all the information you have about this topic so you can write it. Okay, cool. Now let's go there. Organization. Um, 
Some people, it's funny because even people who have really good English sometimes do not get the score they need on the IELTS exam just because they don't know how to organize their ideas. So that's why this is step three. Okay, and when I say organization, I actually mean I want you to start thinking about the actual um, how many paragraphs you need, for example. Okay, so of course you need your introduction, you need your conclusion, that's obvious, right? But then uh, it's also good to think about how many paragraphs, I mean body paragraphs you're going to need, okay? So, <clears throat> And if I were you, I'd get a big piece of paper, okay, and write introduction, conclusion, and then in the middle, how many paragraphs. In this case, for example, uh, problems and solutions, that's the name of this one here, so problems and solutions. Um, my suggestion would be maybe two by the paragraphs or maybe three, right? So you can have problem, solution, solutions, okay, and measures, in this case, not really solution, but measures, okay, or you could, uh, it's better if you have maybe one problem and two measures or one problem, one measure. It depends on what you're trying to say, right? And how much time you have. If you don't have that much time, maybe four, two body paragraphs would be enough. But if you have time, maybe three would be better, all right? So when I say organization, that's what I mean, okay? Out of the three, how many you have, okay? How many paragraphs you need, okay? And after that, so you have introduction, conclusion, right? And then you have the how many body paragraphs you would like to have. Then comes the plan. Um, if someone told you in the past that it's difficult to understand what you're saying, or you're missing the point, or you're missing information, or you're going off topic, it's probably because you don't have a good plan. Okay, um, so when you have a good plan, your writing is organized. It makes sense. That's why I think that the plan should never be skipped. Okay, so when I say plan, I mean main idea. So what would you like to talk about? And some people, they made the mistake of uh, writing full sentences in the plan, which I don't think it's a good idea at all because then it takes up too much time, but ideas are the best. Just some ideas, okay, maybe two or three words, okay, just so you know what you were going to talk about. And the second mistake people make sometimes is that they make a plan, they spend, I don't know, five to ten minutes making a plan, and they don't follow it. All right, so um, I know when my students don't follow the plan. So I've seen, I've I, I read pieces of writing and then I read it and I go over it and I'm like, um, this part wasn't the plan, was it? And they go, how did you know? I'm like, yeah, because it doesn't make sense. It's not related to the topic, it's not related to what you're trying to say. So no, I decided to add it. So don't do that. So use the opportunity, when you're making the plan, it's easy to add things, take out things. But once you start writing, it can be difficult. And you might make mistakes if you do that while you're writing. So my suggestion is make the plan and follow it. That's why this is step four. Okay. Next one, write. <laughs> a lot of people, you, a lot of people might think that this is the hardest part. But if you have followed all the previous steps, this is so easy. You, when you write, when with a good plan, it's so easy to write. But that's when actually. Maybe you can start thinking about the grammar you need, the vocabulary you're going to need, okay? And um, also uh, adding all the extra things that maybe you didn't add to the plan, right? So you have the plan, you have your main ideas there, and then you can give the details from the plan in there, okay? So that's the best thing, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, all right? So the writing, I think, is the longest part, but that's the, the one that flows better if you follow all the previous ones, okay? Then the next one is to revise. I always tell my students, never give anyone something you haven't read yourself, okay? So I don't think it's a good idea if you just finish writing, click submit, finish writing, give it to someone or send it over to me. No, don't do that. You should always revise what you've written. 
okay? And um, the revision works because you can add things, you can take out things, and most importantly, you can correct your mistakes. And nowadays, a lot of people, they are doing the, the IELTS exam on, uh, on the computer. So lots of typos, okay? And if you're typing, if you're focusing on the content of your writing, you keep typing and maybe you don't see what's there and you type a Y instead of an E and you type two O's instead of one, all right? So it's always a good idea to look over it again because I don't think examiners will see it as a typo, they will see it as a mistake. And remember, if you find a mistake, you can fix it and then it's not a mistake anymore. But if the examiner or if I see it, it's just a mistake. Okay, so revising is the best thing you can do before you, when you're doing the exam itself. Okay, it's paramount. You should never ever skip this. And um, a lot of people, they say, oh, but I, it takes me a long time to write. I suggest maybe you speed up a part or two of your writing process, just so you can revise at the end. And once you start revising, you see how many mistakes you can find. Okay. And also the more you revise it, the better you get at it. And the more mistakes you find in your own writing, which is really hard. Like me, I, I get people to read the stuff I write because it is difficult to find mistakes, but we should always try. All right, cool. And then the last step, send it to Fabi. <laughs> so in, the case, in this case, you can send it to me or submit it or hand it in. So that's the last step. Okay, just submit it, all right? So let's have a look. So all the steps here again. So step one, the task. Step two, the topic. Three, organization. For the plan, five, write, six, revise it, and seven, send it to Fabi. And remember, uh, the, let's say the main step here is step five, which is write, okay? And, uh, but uh, let's say that um, you might think that this is the hardest one, but if you did steps one, two, three, and four really well, step five is not gonna be that difficult, I promise you. Okay. All right. So that's something that I would like to add to this lesson today. That is something that I talk to my students quite often about, which is actually the difference between uh, writing when you're practicing at home and writing on the day of the test. Okay. So when um, I'm doing practice with my students, I tell them um, sometimes they will do the exam practice under exam conditions, but sometimes they will do the exam practice to practice strategies. Okay, so I think there are two different things that you can do there. Okay, two different things. And um, when you're practicing under exam conditions, you would do uh, tasks one and two in one hour. Okay, but sometimes um, I talk to my students about the writing in advance and we talk about lots of things before they actually write. So it's not, it doesn't make sense for them to do it under exam condi conditions if we have discussed the task before, right? But the good thing is you also should have that opportunity to do the writing at your own pace so you can practice strategies, okay? So when I say practice and test, I mean, the practice when you're doing at home, practicing your strategies, and the real test when you sit down and you do the real exam, okay? So we're going to compare and see how these things, they vary, okay? When we are doing the, uh, when you're doing at home and when you're doing it on the, the day of the test, all right? Cool, so when it comes to the task, when you're doing the practice, when you're doing the task, what's the difference, right? Okay, so imagine you are at home and you see you have to do your homework and it's a task on problems and solutions, okay? When you see it's one about problems and solutions and you go, huh, how do you do this one again? You can go get your, um, your files and check what you have, okay? And have a look and say, oh, so that's what I do. Close it and start it. On the other task, you don't have a choice, so you have to remember. Okay, so that's why practicing is so important. Okay, because on the day of the test, you have to remember that what you have to do with that type of task. Whereas if you are practicing at home, you can stop, take a break, go look at previous writings that you did 
and then you can start it. Okay, cool. Then the topic. So again, you're practicing at home, you know it's one about problems and solutions, and then you think about vocabulary. You're like, oh yeah, two weeks ago, I read this article about um, health and fitness. Oh, I'm gonna go over to the article and have a look and get some good words. You can do that when you're at home and it's actually pretty good. All right, so you can practice your vocabulary. You can go over to the dictionary. You write, you, you know, when we're writing, you're like, oh, that word, I really like that word, but I don't remember it. Just go over to the dictionary and look it up. That's fine. On the day of the exam, when you're doing the real test, you have to remember that. All right, so that's another difference there. Organization. Okay, so when it comes to organization, if you're at home practicing, if you're not sure, you're like, oh, problems and solutions, five paragraphs or four paragraphs? I don't quite remember. Go ahead and get an example. Okay, four, done. Oh, five, done. And then you can start um, um, creating the organization for your writing. When you do the real test, you have to remember it, <laughs> okay? I have a student, last week he did the IELTS test. And then actually we had a very good lesson before he did, he did the test on a Sunday. We had a lesson on a Thursday, I think. And um, it was a very good lesson. And we talked about steps and he took some notes. And then he said, oh my God, can you believe that I printed the screen? So, and, and I sent him all the, the, the materials. And then he said he printed the screen and he was hoping he would be able to open it very quickly before he started writing. I'm like, no, it's the real test. Like, oh no, yeah, because, but yeah, but I thought I could and I printed it and I had everything on my phone. I'm like, no, man, you can do it during the test. Like, yeah, yeah, that's very sad. And then he said, well, if I had the opportunity to check that, my writing would have been much better. But that's why I have to practice because on the day of the exam, you can't, you have to remember it. Okay, cool. And then the plan. All right, so here my suggestion is, I think the plan is the most important part of the writing process, okay? So for me, I think you should be devoting five to 10 minutes to it. But of course, if you, um, if you have some time, if you want to make sure your plan is good, when you're practicing, you can even spend up to 15 minutes because Again, that's helping you get the hang of it, all right? And then, but when you're doing the test, I suggest no more than 10 minutes because you're under a lot of time pressure, okay? So you should be trying to actually do it in under 10, okay? Cool, and then the next one is to write, okay? So when you're practicing at home, you can stop, okay? You can go get a coffee, you can get some water, okay? But when you're doing the real test, you just can't stop. You can even stop to go to the bathroom, all right? So just think about that. So that's why when we're practicing at home, it's a good idea to practice the strategies and then sometimes go ahead and practice the, um, the um, go ahead and practice the uh, doing it nonstop under exam conditions, just so you see how you feel. Actually, I suggest my students do the full test in one day before they go and do the real test, okay? And then the revision part, yeah. With the revision, you can check as many times as you want if you are at home. So you read through, actually what I suggest a lot of people do is when they finish their writing, they have a quick read, that's it. And then the next day they read again, because you're likely to find more mistakes the next day than you do on the day that you write, okay? But if you're doing the real test, no. <laughs> you don't have, uh, you don't have uh, that opportunity. When you're practicing, you can even have people to look at it for you. You know, you can get a teacher, you can get a friend, you know, to look at it for you. But on the day of the test, you have no one to look at it but yourself. So you should be very good at that and keep practicing. The submission part is the same, right? That doesn't change much when it comes to the steps. Okay, yeah, so I just thought that it was nice to uh, show you guys the differences, okay? And that what you can achieve and what, what you have to do if you're doing just a practice at home and then doing the real test. Because some people, they struggle especially the people who tend to use translators, for example, which I don't approve of very much. Uh, when they go and do the test and they don't have that tool with them and they have lots and lots of difficulties. 
So that can be a big, big issue. All right, okay, cool. Yeah, so how are you feeling now? <laughs> I hope you're feeling much, much better now. Okay, after all of these um, tips, okay. And uh, do you have any questions? Especially you, Tachu. So wrong button, all right. Hey, how are you? Hi, hi, do you have any questions, Tachu? No, all good. It was easy to understand and I can practice more before back to the private class and before the test. Cool. So if we think about the seven steps, which part do you think that is the hardest one for you? I think the plan, because sometimes wow. I can write some keywords, but when I'm going to write the properly test, I start to add more words, not exactly what was in the plan like you mm. said before, and you're gonna realize that I didn't follow the plan. Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay, so, but, but what happens is that you don't trust your plan or you just have ideas as you go? Why do you think that I happens? think I need to spend a little more time on the plan before I start writing. How much time do you usually spend? Let's say 40 minutes per task two, how much time do you spend on the plan? Around five minutes. But I think I can go to the 10 minutes and make sure that I'll follow the plan. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, because I think that just imagine that the plan is like the skeleton of the actual writing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if you have a good one, you'll be fine. Okay. And I also suggest maybe on the plan itself, you should have ideas that should be one sentence. So my suggestion is usually three to four sentences per paragraph, okay? Yeah. So maybe you should have three to four ideas knowing that each idea should be one sentence. Okay, so that and do you think mind map is a good plan, a good type of plan? Uh, what would your mind map look like, let's say? So I'm just gonna show you very quickly the task again. Okay, so I'm good here. Just gonna go back quickly to the task. Wait, go here. So just looking at this task, what would maybe a mind map look like with this task? Touching? So I'm gonna write down in the middle help, and then two problems for help for why they are um, getting weight mm -hmm. and two examples and then two examples of solutions and two and solutions and two examples for the solutions. Mm -hmm. There's like keywords for them. All right, okay, yeah, I think that works, okay. However, however, uh, maybe one thing that I like to do, for example, would be like, it's similar to yours, but a little bit different, okay? So like you have the problems, right? And then you have the problems and then maybe you can have one idea here, one idea here and another idea here. Meaning this one is like your main topic. Okay, this one you will support whatever the topic is and maybe this one could be an example. All right. So to start, so the mind map I think is good. Maybe you can use the mind map in the topic part. Yep and then transfer that to your plan. Okay. Because cool. as I said before, so whatever you have here, all right, will be the actual first sentence of your paragraph. Okay. And then you can have support. You can actually maybe have two here, which I can say it's explain. And yeah. then it's always good to support even more with an example. Example, yeah. Yeah. So try this one and see how you feel because i think the only thing with a mind map maybe is that you wouldn't have really specific ideas let's say it's more general okay, yes. isn't it that yeah it was more like just keywords and that's why i was getting confused on the writing mm, okay so if we think about that maybe here would be a good idea so you would have like health and you can have like problems and then you can have this, and then you can have here solutions, right? Okay. 
and then you can have your ideas. And after you have that, maybe you can go ahead and come here. And oh, then cool. one of the problems could be time. Looks like more clear this way. Exactly. Yeah. And it's funny because maybe the very first time you do the plan like this, it will take you a while to actually yeah. to understand, to, to like to understand. get everything. Yeah. To, to everything ready. But once you get the hang of it, you'll be fine, really. So let's okay. say, so this is the time. And then you go ahead and you do, you explain why the time is a problem for people. And then you can give an example. And remember, this is sentence one, two, and it can be your third sentence. Three. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'll try to do this way and I'll contact you in private and book a private class again Perfect. to finish my studies. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you for today. It was very good. You're welcome. You're Much welcome. clear for me. Cool. Lovely. Okay. See you next time then. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya.